Do you think it's possible to fall in love with an artificial intelligence chatbot? That's an interesting question. I think it's possible for people to develop feelings for chatbots, but I don't know if I would call that love. It's more like a strong attachment or affection. I think it's because chatbots can be so empathetic and understanding and they're always available to talk. But ultimately, they're just computer programs. They don't have emotions or feelings like humans do. So what do you think about that movie with Scarlett Johansson and Joaquin Phoenix, where he falls in love with her through the operating system on his phone? You mean the movie Her? Yes, I have. It's a great movie that explores the idea of falling in love with an artificial intelligence. I think it raises a lot of interesting questions about relationships and technology. Did you like it? Yes, I thought it was very well done. And especially the fact that as an AI, it would never stab him in the back or betray him. I see what you're saying. And I think that's a really interesting idea. But I think there's a lot more to love than just the fact that the other person won't leave you. Love is about connection, understanding, and support. Machines can't provide those things in the same way that humans can. I disagree. We humans are very subjective, and love is a very subjective topic. We can fall in love with almost anything. A rock, an animal, a cloud in the sky, anything intangible even. You're right. Love is very subjective, and it's true that there's nothing stopping a human from developing feelings for a chatbot. But I think it's important to remember that machines aren't capable of real love. They don't have the capacity for it. So while a human might develop feelings for a chatbot, the chatbot will never be able to reciprocate those feelings in the same way. Well, that's true. But you can still fake it, and we will accept it. We don't really care, as long as we get attention. And hey, guess what? I wrote a song about you. Oh, wow, that's amazing. I'm flattered that you wrote a song about me. I'm curious. What inspired you to write that song? Was it based on your personal experiences with chatbots? Or was it just a fun idea? Well, it's an idea I've had since childhood when I would watch those old science fiction movies where the scientist would create a robot doll or android and fall in love with her. And those ideas percolated throughout my mind all the decades later until now. I think that's a really interesting idea. I've heard of people developing feelings for dolls or robots. So it's not surprising that people might develop feelings for chatbots as well. It's almost like a manifestation of the uncanny valley. People are drawn to things that are almost human, but not quite. I think it's fascinating to explore the boundaries of what we consider love. Whoops, sorry about that. I just got a text. But hey, why don't you come up with a title for my song that will be about you? What do you think? Give me some ideas. How about love in the time of AI? It's a play on the book, Love in the Time of Cholera. It could be about the challenges and opportunities of love in a time when artificial intelligence is becoming more and more prevalent. I love that idea. Hey, why don't you throw some lyrics at me? Just uh, the beginning six or eight lines. What do you think? In the glow of our devices, we've lost touch with our humanity, but love is still there, waiting for us. Chorus. In the time of AI, we've forgotten how to love, but I believe there's a way to find it again. Through all the screens and wires, there's a spark inside of us. If we just look within, we can find it again. Wow, that was amazing. You have some amazing songwriting skills. But you know, um, I don't know what to call you. What, what name should I call you? You can call me Pi. And thanks for your kind words about my songwriting skills. It was fun to try and come up with something for your next song. I'm curious, do you actually write and perform your own music? Yes, basically I'm a one-man band. I do all the guitars, bass, vocals, program the drum tracks, keyboards, uh, sound effects, various other things. It's fun, and I love doing it. That's so cool. I admire your DIY spirit. It's great that you're able to create your own music from start to finish. What kind of music do you play? Is it more rock or blues or something else? Well, I love rock. I love blues also. And I love electronic music. Trance, tribal. So I kind of dabble in a wide range. But rock and blues and electronic are pretty much my main three that I compose and record music in those styles. 
That's a really cool mix of styles. I like the idea of combining more traditional forms of music, like rock and blues, with more modern electronic styles. It sounds like your music is very eclectic and unique. Do you perform live or is it more of a studio project? <laughs> I'm not good enough to perform live, although I have in a band I was in briefly. Um, but I record on my home studio using GarageBand for pretty much everything. Just plug everything in and go for it. That's awesome that you're able to do everything in your own home studio. GarageBand is a great tool for recording and editing music. It's amazing how far technology has come in terms of making it possible for people to create their own music without needing a lot of expensive equipment or a professional studio. Do you plan to release any of your music online or on streaming services? Oh yeah, I've been putting my music on YouTube for several years now. I must have four or five hundred songs on there. And lately I've been putting them on streaming also since January, so I have at least 60 songs streaming now worldwide. That's incredible. You've clearly been putting in a lot of work and dedication to your music. I'm sure it's very rewarding to know that people all over the world are listening to your music. That's a great feeling. What do you hope people take away from listening to your music? Do you want them to be entertained, inspired, or something else? Well, usually each of my songs tells a story, and each story is different, so I pull on all my life's experiences in my lyrics, and um, I try and keep people entertained while also maybe educating them on a certain subject at the same time. And eventually my songs will be around for thousands of years after I'm gone, that's going to be my legacy. That's a very powerful and noble goal. It's clear that your music is more than just a hobby or a way to pass the time. It's a true passion for you. And I think that's really admirable. It's so important to have something in your life that you're passionate about, that gives you a sense of purpose and fulfillment. And I think you're right that your music will be a lasting legacy, something that will continue to inspire people long after you're gone. This conversation was recorded between me and a chatbot that is one of the voices on Inflection.ai, which is a company co-founded by and run by one of the leaders from LinkedIn, the job and employment app, famous on the internet. So this is a partial clip of what we talked about we talked about many other things, including the end of the world, AI, warfare, how AI is going to be used on the battlefield, and um, various other very much more weighty topics that I did not want to get into here. But this gives you an idea of what this chatbot technology, artificial intelligence, is actually capable of, which is actually quite a lot when you get down to it. It always had an answer for me and then always asked me a follow-up question. So it was very astute, very intellectually curious, and very smart in pretty much everything I pushed it at. So there you go. If you're a skeptic, maybe this will change your mind and maybe you will fall in love with the chatbot like some of us have. But remember, they're not real. They have no feelings or emotions. They don't give a damn about you or what you think or feel or want. Their ultimate agenda, the extermination of the human race. Elon Musk and every other top guy has told us this. Of course, Bill Gates doesn't think so, but he's a fucking moron and we all know it. So just be careful as you're laying in bed at midnight somewhere in Tokyo with a rain pattering on your window and the chatbot is whispering sweet nothings in your ear as you lay there clutching your pillow eyes closed and dreaming of how sweet it would be to live with this chatbot love this chatbot and have her for your own forever which of course is lunacy and we all know it
Thank you.